Hey Kid Labbers, we are so excited you are back to study the ocean with us. If you are new around here, these online learning labs are part of our Spark series where we hope to give you resources to help spark a love of learning with your child at home. Last time we studied coral reefs, this time we're going way deeper into the ocean to study the five different layers. But first I wanna show you two amazing resources that have been helpful for us here at Kid Lab as we study. The first is an awesome resource called the Visual Compendium of Wonders from Nature, the Natural World. This has some great diagrams. The one we're looking at this week is called Ocean Layers. And the second I wanna to highlight today is called The Most Brilliant Boldly Going Book of Exploration Ever. It has some really, really awesome diagrams. This one in particular is a one we're looking at, taking us all the way to the bottom. So scientists believe we've explored less than 5% of all of the oceans in the world. That is amazing. We actually know more about outer space right now than we do about our very own oceans. So let's talk about it. There are five layers in the ocean. Let's think about it like a five layer cake because I really like cake. Yum. Okay, okay. So let's start at the top of the ocean cake. The first layer is called the sunlight zone. It goes down about 600 feet. This is where sunlight can still penetrate through. So you're gonna find the coral reefs. You're gonna find almost all of the creatures that we know and love, turtles, sharks, sunfish, all kinds of amazing things. Keep going a little bit further and now we've got layer two. This takes us up to 3,300 feet in what's known as the twilight zone. The temperatures of the water goes down. We're starting to get close to freezing temperature. We've lost a lot of that sunlight and the animals start to get weirder. The next layer, layer three, is called the midnight zone. Ooh. Temperatures are below freezing. This takes us up to about 14 thousand feet below sea level. That is crazy, crazy deep. Layer four of our ocean cake farther and farther and farther and farther down is the abyssal zone down to 19,500 feet at this point. The intense pressure, we would not be able to survive down there. We would have to be in a deep sea submersible. It is definitely pitch dark and believe it or not, there's even one last layer to our ocean cake. It's called the Hadal Zone. This is a part of the ocean that has yet to be fully explored. And it includes these things called trenches. What's a trench, you might ask? Great question. Our Earth is covered in what's called tectonic plates. And these plates shift and move a bit. And on land, when the tectonic plates shift, you will experience an earthquake or a new volcano might emerge. In the water, in the ocean, when plates shift and move, you get what's called subduction. One plate is gonna go down while the other is pushed up. That's called subduction. And right in there is what's called a trench. It's these V-shaped indentations at the bottom of the ocean. So these big numbers might be hard to grasp. So let's put it into terms we can picture in our minds. The world's tallest mountain, Mount Everest, is 29,000 feet tall. And that's still 8,000 or so feet short of the deepest known part of the ocean. Have you ever been on an airplane and looked out the window? If so, you have a pretty good sense here of the tremendous distance between the airplane and the ground below. And that's like me taking a swim and the amount of ocean that's down below me. For this project, we'll use five liquids, dish soap, water, rubbing alcohol, maple syrup, and milk. I also recommend using either glass jars or like I have, plastic test tubes. Something clear so that you can see what we're working with. It might also be helpful to have a funnel, droppers, and a stir stick. You'll also want blue food coloring, and I prefer to have a tray. So what we wanna do is to recreate the five layers of the ocean in a glass jar, or in my case, a test tube. Now some of you may already know about something called liquid density. That is how heavy or dense a liquid is compared to another one. So if we have these five liquids here, I wonder if we can guess which might be the heaviest or most dense. 
and which might be the lightest. What do you think? Maybe you guessed that maple syrup was the most dense because it's very sticky and ooey and gooey when you pour it slowly on your pancakes. So let's put maple syrup at the bottom. It's the most dense. How about dish soap and water? How would they compare? Most dish soaps seem pretty thick, so maybe we guess somewhere in the middle? What do you think? Take a minute to jot down your hypothesis. That's a fancy science word. That means your very best guess. All right, you got it? Well, here's the answer. Rubbing alcohol is the least dense. It's gonna make our top layer, the sunlight zone. Next, we have water. That's gonna be our twilight zone. Third, we have dish soap. That's gonna make up our midnight zone. Layer four is gonna be milk. That's the abyssal zone. And last, but certainly not least, the Hadal zone with maple syrup. Now, to differentiate each layer, we are gonna add some blue food coloring. And I'm gonna use a paint sample just because I think it's very helpful to see light to dark blue. Okay, let's give this a try. We're gonna work our way backwards. Let's do the Hadal zone maple syrup. Don't be too discouraged if it turns out something like this and you can't quite see all five layers yet. The longer you let it sit, the more the layers will start to sink down into their correct density strata, including the rubbing alcohol here at the top will be a little more visible here in a few minutes. So I let this sit for a few hours and then I came back with a flashlight so that I could really start to see the different layers. So a couple of things I noticed if I was gonna run this experiment again, I would do things a bit differently. The milk that I used obviously is bright white so you had to use quite a bit of food coloring in order to get um, a good blue, a good shade of blue. And I would use even more because as you see here, the abyssal zone where the milk is should actually be quite a bit darker, right? Not lighter than the midnight zone right above it. So I would do that a bit differently. Either way, I think the experiment works because you can uh, talk about liquid density and you can really start to see how some of the liquids are a lot more dense and sink down to the bottom and some that are less dense are gonna stay right there at the top. If you give this project a try, be sure to tag us so we can see and check out the description below for more resources and links to some of these things we've been talking about. See you next time. See you next time. See you next time. See you next time. See you next time.